Hello, I'm live after months and months. I don't know how long it's been, but I haven't been live in a while and I felt ready today to be here with you. And so I hope to see some of you join. I know it's been a while, so welcome if you're listening this after I'm here live. Welcome if you're coming in person. Let me know in the comments where you are joining from. And uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like this is a topic that goes unnoticed, but that I know that many of my clients, both inside my groups and in my private sessions, are always talking about. It's holiday season, and so that means that there's a lot of planning, a lot of traveling for some families, having visits over from family members that maybe you see from time to time, and you know, uh, I get it that sometimes having grandparents over is fun, but it can get pretty uh, uncomfortable sometimes, or that family member that you rarely see, or both families coming together and the dynamics not being the best, um, and then most importantly, you as mom, as one of the leaders of your home, feeling overburnt, uh, burned out, feeling overwhelmed, uh, feeling like you have too much on your plate. And I just want today to give you some tips on how to best navigate a season that it's supposed to be filled with joy. And the thing is, I want it to be joyful and peaceful for you too. And not only have it be peaceful and fun for the children, for your parents, for the people visiting you, uh, for your partner, thinking about you know all the toys or all the Christmas shopping, all the Hanukkah shopping, and nothing for you. And I'm a mom too. I'm a mom of two for those of you who are joining me live for the first time. I am a licensed marriage and family therapist and I have two kiddos, six, almost seven, and four about to be five in a couple of weeks. And believe me, like I've been in that same place of feeling overwhelmed um, just last year. It was really, really hard over the holiday season because it was my son's birthday, which falls in December. It was Hanukkah, it was family coming over, it was a lot of planning, planning a big birthday party, planning the birthday in his school, planning then the, the, you know, the Shabbat party that he usually hosts in school, like one time a year, uh, hosting Hanukkah, like all of the things, right? And it was really overwhelming to the point that after the third day of going to Party City to fill up the balloons and planning all of the things, I was just done. <laughs> I wanted everything to be over and I wasn't enjoying it. And same thing happens to my clients, right? It, it could be holiday season like right now. It could be, you know, the high holidays for the Jewish families. It could be like a season where you have so much going on. And let me know like if you are a holiday like Christmas or Hanukkah fan, like if this is your best time of the year, if this is like the funnest for you or if you struggle because reality is, is that not everyone has you know, the, the best family dynamics. And I, again, I see that as a therapist. So for me, the best thing to feel less overwhelmed, the number one thing that you need to have a successful, and by success, it, does, it doesn't have to be like this huge Christmas tree going all out for Hanukkah or going all out for Christmas or going all out for a New Year's party. It doesn't have to be saying yes to all of the parties. It doesn't have to be spending $500, $1,000 on gifts. It can be simple, right? And for me, the number one tip that I can give you to actually start enjoying the holiday season is to have clear and healthy boundaries with your children, with your partner, with yourself, with your friends, with your family members. If you start your list or any, any family gathering, anything that is happening over the, the holiday season with I have to, we have to, um, I don't want to, but if I don't, they're going to talk poorly about me or I need to, that's a red flag. Do you really need to? Do you really want to? And yes, maybe your family members won't like it that you say no or that you don't show up or that you show up late or that you tell them that this year you don't want to host. 
but that's okay because you got to do it for you you got to do it for your own inner peace and you got to do it also because kids start like what happens when you don't have clear boundaries with yourself with others with your family members when you don't say things like straightforward with like respectfully right and there's ways to do that is that you start feeling resentful you start yelling you start losing your patience you start feeling that anxiety inside your body. You start having trouble sleeping. You maybe stop getting along with certain family members because you don't know how to handle. Like I actually told, told one of my clients today, you are uncomfortable being uncomfortable. Like you're uncomfortable feeling a lot of those emotions, right? But you have to start setting limits. Like we got to a point in our therapeutic relationship where it was like, we can keep talking about this or you can actually start doing something about it. So I gave her one baby step on how to do this, specifically how to set that boundary, how to say it, how to start the conversation. I gave her some ideas. Obviously we do, you don't have to, this is not a script where you have to be reading the paper, right? It's just an idea to help you set a verbal boundary, which can be an emotional boundary or a physical boundary, right? Like an emotional boundary can be something like, you know what, right now I don't want to talk about this. I need some space before we get into this conversation. Or, you know what, I didn't like the way that you spoke to me yesterday and I wish it would have gone differently. A physical boundary can be like, you know what, I'm not hosting the party this year. I know I always do and I get it. It can feel disappointing, but this year I don't want to. This year, I love it that you're coming, but I'd rather you stay in an Airbnb or in a hotel. We cannot host you this year. And I get it. It can be really anxiety provoking to say those things. Just like a few couple of months ago, it was the high holidays for one of my, my Jewish clients. And she had family coming over that she rarely gets to see. And the family members like pretty much called them, called her and said, you know, we're coming and pretty much host us for the holidays. But we're getting off a cruise and we're sick. We don't know if it's the flu. We don't know if it's COVID. We don't know what it is. And she felt like, you know, this person is going to show up to my family, to my dinner and get us all sick. I don't have time to get sick. And I said, well, you know what? You don't have to host them. You can let them know respectfully, like, hey, you know, the correct thing to do right now because we cannot afford to get sick right now or we don't want to get sick or to avoid any issues is for you to go and get tested for the flu, tested for COVID or wear masks or we're, we'll eat outside or, you know, let's wait like three more days for you to come over. And she's, she was like, I can do that. And I'm like, yeah, you can do that. You can say those things. Okay, but the thing is, Sometimes we don't know, we literally do not know how to set boundaries because there were no boundaries in your family of origin, meaning from your parents or grandparents, depending on who raised you, right? I know in some families we are raised by parents and grandparents. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of it, I know a lot of it comes from it having insecure attachments or not having the best dynamic with your parents never have learned to set boundaries because your boundaries or your needs were not respected. Not knowing where your thoughts end and when the other uh, person's thoughts like and desires start. So it all starts within and that's what I love about giving my clients the spaces to actually first of all determine like what are your needs, what are your boundaries, what do you want to be comfortable with those uncomfortable emotions, to, to practice together how to say these things, but most importantly, to understand where most, if not all, your limiting thoughts come from that prevent you from actually enjoying the holidays or, or saying no to this family member or not showing up for that party that you truly you don't want to go to. Or this need to buy all of the gifts because if not, the kids will not have a good Christmas or a good Hanukkah. I know majority of the moms that I work with are overwhelmed because they're saying yes to too many things that they do not want to say yes to. And they are the last human being on their list. 
Let me know if you have any questions thus far. I'm going to take a little break to get some water and just to, you know, get some questions or get some feedback. Let me know if this is resonating for you. And if you just got here, yes, this is going to be recorded in my um, on my feed if you want to watch it later. You know, another thing that happens a lot during the holidays is like families showing up unannounced. And I've been the person also to tell my parents like, hey, especially when we first got, you know, married and it's been eight years now. Um, oh, I'm going to read this that, that Angie said right now. Telling my parents, I know I gave my dad the key of my house uh, when my daughter was born and he was coming in like literally unannounced. Um, without knocking, opening the door, and I'm like, um, yeah, like it's not only my house anymore, and I love that you're coming, but you either have to knock or you have to give me the key. You can no longer come like this. You can send me a text, you can knock, but this is just not okay. And it was hard. It was hard because he wasn't used to that. I wasn't used to that. He wasn't. He wasn't doing it with bad intentions obviously it was just we needed some time practicing setting boundaries once our family dynamics changed and I became my own family outside my family of origin obviously like when I got married moved out of you know my house moved into this house and had her baby so Angie over here saying someone told me that if I didn't go to this party I was not going to be invited anymore okay we don't need threats Nobody needs threats. We do not ever want to be in a conditional relationship. And, and believe me, I feel like every family member, unfortunately, every, every human being in any family has, unfortunately, a conditional relationship. And this person, I get it. Maybe you start setting boundaries and there is resistance. That's common. That's normal. Why? Because they're not used to it. So yes, they're going to have some resistance which can come out in the form of this comment of giving you this threat that you're not going to be invited anymore. If they truly value that relationship with you, believe me, after that initial emotion, they're going to take it back. Now, if it is a conditional relationship, then yeah, maybe that relationship will be done and you'll know where you stand with that person. I know in my best friendships that we can talk about hard things and yes we may hurt each other's feelings unintentionally but once we move past those feelings and initial reactions and become logical then we can only grow our relationship so yes some resistance is expected and their emotions are valid too again because they're not used to this boundary. Now, I get it. I've had an uh, Inside Mindful Mom method. I've had moms, women who unfortunately um, do not have the best relationships with at least one of their parents who did grow up with either a narcissistic family member or, you know, with um, an insecure attachment where your needs and your voice and your feelings were rarely, if ever, validated. And that's hard but now you're an adult and if you're here I'm assuming that if you're following me you're a parent or a parent to be okay and it starts with you understanding what your values are where those thoughts are coming from where those limiting beliefs are coming from and most importantly learning to be uncomfortable sorry learning to be comfortable with those uncomfortable emotions Anna over here, welcome. I love having you here. What if the other person is resentful and holds grudges? Again, that's part of having a conditional relationship. It may take time. Again, it re unfortunately, I will say this because I also work not only with families, but also with couples. It takes two in the relationship, right? And we don't know when we set um, clear and respectful, assertive boundaries, we don't know how the other person will react. It may take time or the relationship may end, or, and most importantly, the hope is that the relationship changes in a healthy way, in a healthy dynamic. 
where this person can say no to you and even if you get offended you're gonna respect their wishes and you can also say no to them I, I get it especially if we come from Hispanic and meshed families is going to be hard especially after we get married and we have his tra your partner's traditions and your traditions and how those two come together or you create your own dynamics your own parenting style your own set of values your own set of boundaries if you continue to live with the same expectations to please your parents or your other family members, I mean, again, that is going to be, first of all, that is going to be passed down to your children and that's going to show up in the anxiety, in the yelling, in the feeling unhappy, in the not wanting to be there. So I wish I could give you a, I promise you, if you say this script, this person will not hold a grudge against you or will not stop inviting you to that party. Unfortunately, we can never, ever, ever predict how another person is going to react. However, again, I'll repeat this, is that if you've never set an assertive boundary and you start doing it, there is going to be resistance. The same happens between a parent-child relationship. Let's say every day you allowed your child to watch TV until, I don't know, 9 p.m., and again, I'm not criticizing this at all. I'm just saying every day you did that. And then all of a sudden you're like, you know what? My kid is overtired. I'm tired. I'm going to set this new boundary of no TV past 7 p.m. Your child is going to meet you with resistance. And you have to hold your ground assertively. You can even after the holidays or at some point touch like knock on the door not figure it, not uh, literally, right? But you can tell that person, send a text, uh, send a letter, make a phone call and say, hey, I understand that it was hard for you that we missed the party, but I really value my relationship with you. And I hope that we can either get on FaceTime or go to Starbucks, get some coffee, go on a walk, meet at your house um, so we can talk about this and we can move forward from this. My intentions were never to hurt you. I'm just doing things differently and this year I really couldn't go or I needed to set this limit for myself. I promise you, like again, as I told my clients today after three months of meeting, I said, you know what? We can either keep talking about the same patterns or you can actually put the homework that I give you into action. Like what's truly stopping you? I know it's scary, right? But again, you choose. You choose if you want to end your limiting beliefs, if you want to start being more assertive, if you want to start being that mom that is truly happy, truly calm and confident. And most importantly, again, as I told my clients today, but I tell this to all of my clients, like parenting is really about modeling and about what you want to pass down to your children. So I'm telling my children to be assertive, but I'm not assertive. I'm telling my children to hold their ground with their friends, but I'm not holding my ground with my friends. They see that. And most importantly, they do see hugely a difference between an anxious, a resentful, an overtired, a sad, an upset, an angry mom. They do see that. Okay? So, my invitation to you is, first of all, you do deserve to have like these spaces and to have these boundaries. You do deserve to listen to that little voice to, that is telling you that it's time for things to be different, okay? And so I want to give you that space and that guidance to start being more assertive. It starts inside and we work from over here, deep, deep, deep down inside. Because if you want to be assertive, you have to first really truly understand what it is that you want. So you start working inside and then you start going outside, outside, outside until you're ready to set those firm boundaries. Firm means assertive. It doesn't mean that we have to be aggressive. It doesn't mean that we're going to get it right the first time. It doesn't mean that we're going to be conditional. Okay, it means that we're going to start having logical conversations, not reactive conversations. So I do want to, and I am very excited to invite you to this because the whole point 
of Mindful Mom Method was to do this group several times a year. And I was meant to start it October 26. But unfortunately, as you may have seen me on my social media, many things happened and I was not ready. I needed to be assertive myself. I was not ready to do it and I was not in my best place to do it. But I do want to open this space again because as one mama who did it shared with me, she's like, you are the happiest when you do this. And you know, the results that she got and that all the women get are absolutely amazing because again, we work inside and out. All of the information is in my link in the first link that you see. But if you have been following me for a while, if you are on my wait list, I want you to follow your intuition and act, truly, truly act, because I know that you may think, oh, it's the holidays, I don't have time, oh, it's the holidays, I have to buy all of these, all of these gifts, oh, it's the holidays, I'm going to be traveling. First of all, it's a, self a self-paced space. It was created by me, a mom, who also happens to be a licensed therapist. A mom who is also busy. Everything is self-paced. You do have three months to do it, but the beauty and true transformation of it is in the group meetings because of the huge close proximity that you have to me because there's only 10 moms in it. We do have a couple of moms that have already signed up over the weekend and took advantage of the uh, Thanksgiving, Black Friday, um, um, discount that I have going on, which is a hundred dollars off. Okay. You can use the code grateful 20 to get 20% off. Okay. Now this is a container, a class, a program, a group program that lasts. The group sessions are six weeks, one time per week on Thursday. We start next Thursday, December the 7th. If you have been doing it right now, is the time. The meetings are an hour and the rest you do on your own. But the meet, the real juice is in the meetings so that you can ask me the questions, so that you can process the information together. Every week you get access to one module that has three short videos. That is all. And the whole point is for you to start learning how to think critically, how to really listen to your limiting beliefs, how to really set clear values and clear boundaries, how to really start healing those relationships, okay? Because it is your inner child that is not allowing you to set clear boundaries and assertive boundaries. And of course, those limiting beliefs that tell you that you have to be the perfect daughter, the perfect mom, and all of these things. And the favorite part of mine and of every person, every mama who has done is the beautiful guy that comes with the journaling. Why? Because truly for me, actually I give a lot of journaling exercises to my clients. It's in the journaling that you get to know yourself and you get that clarity. Now, this group program is worth over $2,000 and you're getting it for $397 or three payments of $143. And you get huge, 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 huge proximity. You can see all of the testimonials of all of the moms who have come to it. The whole point of starting, I really thought about this. Do I want to start this now in December? And then I thought, you know what? Yes, because it is a gift of self-love. It is a space where you can actually enjoy the holidays because you're going to have all of these tools. And you're going to have, most importantly, this space where you can come and vent you can come and process everything that is going on. We do take a break um, the week of Christmas and New Year's, okay? So you'll get three meetings starting December 7th, and then in the New Year, starting January, we're going to have the other three meetings. And you get the three beautiful bonuses as well. More Peace at Home, which is all about conscious and, and uh, positive discipline. You also get um, How to Raise Secure and Resilient Kids which is all about creating secure attachments. And you also get same page parenting because I know that a lot of the issues that we have in our families is because we're not knowing how to literally be on the same page when it comes to parenting with our partners. 
okay so i want to give you all of the tools so that you can feel calm so that you can feel confident so that you have you can actually stop feeling the mom guilt and be that mom that you want to be so you can start feeling more at peace and less overwhelmed let me know if you have any questions and i'm really truly happy to be here again with you thank you for joining me you know on this live but i do want to open the floor for some questions, comments about what I talked about, about mindful mom method. And I do encourage you to act from the results that you want to get, and not all of the objections that are telling you that right now is not the time. The whole point of me creating mindful mom method is giving you all of the therapeutic tools that any of my private clients would get, but in a way that is absolutely more accessible and beautiful and enjoyable because you get to also learn and listen, not only from me, but from the other nine beautiful women who come in. And by the way, I wanna say like, someone told me today like, oh, I can't, you know, I can't join right now because I work. 90% of the moms or more that come to this program work. And because our meetings are virtual, they come for that hour once a week. They block their time because that is their me time. And the rest they watch at their own pace. You can even download the app, all of the class. You can get it on your phone, on your laptop, on your um on your ipad so even if you're traveling you can do this you can even print this or have it with you on your ipad and do it okay this is not meant to be homework this is meant to be all of the resources so you can start feeling calmer okay so i hope to see you in it like i said we already have a couple signups there's only 10 spots and you do get 20% if you do want to join, that's $100 off with the code GRATEFUL2020, GRATEFUL20. Send me a DM if you uh, can find the link and I'll be absolutely happy to either answer any questions or send you the link, but I'll leave it up to there. And again, thank you so much for joining me.